hello, hello, and everybody, and welcome into Bravo Book Club. What are we on week four? Sorry, guys. I know I'm a bit late tonight. I do apologize, um, but forgive me because it's my birthday on Wednesday. It's my birthday tomorrow. It's my fucking birthday. Hi, guys. Welcome on in. House of Hilton. We are breaking down the next few chapters. And listen, I didn't think it was going to get juicier than what we got last week because last week's Bravo Book Club was so juicy. Get into the Kim Richards of it all and the big Kathy of it all. Oh, hi, Diane. Hi, cutie. Thank you. Thank you, my love. Um, Hello, YouTube. If you're watching this right now, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And welcome on in to Bravo Book Club every Tuesday night. Hi, guys. Oh, my God. Thank you for all the birthday wishes on the Instagram. We are also live on the Instagram at No Filter with Zach. Welcome on in. Welcome on in. Welcome on in. Okay, so today we're going to be breaking down chapters 16 through 21. And holy guacamole, is there a lot to go through. We're going to be talking about Zsa Gabor. We're going to be talking about... um. Elizabeth Taylor. Oh my God. If we thought Big Kathy was wild, the stories we get to this week. Oof. 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 Hello. Hi, Susan. Hi, Coffee Buzz. Hi, Aniki. Aniki. Hi, Vicky. Hi, Dr. Evie. A great color. Great shirt. Thank you. I felt like getting cute today. Thank you, Gemini Patriot. Um, thank you guys for the early birthday wishes. My birthday's tomorrow. My birthday's on Wednesday. So depending on when you're watching this, this is either the countdown to my birthday or my actual birthday on June 15th. Okay, but you don't give a shit about my birthday. You give a shit about House of Hilton, which is what we're breaking down today. I think we have enough people in the room. Shall we dive in? Let's dive in. Thank you, Elizabeth Gambler. I love my hair too. It's fresh. Okay, so chapter 16, here we get to know Conrad. So now we're getting to know Paris's grandfather, Rick's side of the family, Rick Hilton's side. We got to see Kathy's side. Now we're getting into the men, the the the, the male, what is it, the paternal side of things, right? So Conrad Hilton was known as Connie, which to me doesn't sound like a very like strong masculine name. Like, I don't want to be banging some dude named Connie. You know what I mean? Um, but like, sure, if that's what he wanted to go by, like to me, that didn't, that didn't sound too much like an intimidating, like, you know, businessman, entrepreneur, like, oh, I'm going to buy Connie's new book. Like it just, I don't know, it just didn't sound very impressive to me, but whatever. But according to Connie's second wife, Jaja Gabor, he was amply endowed physically as he was financially. And that's what we're going to dive into in the next few chapters. So he was quite the ladies' man, loved to flirt with the long, the young ones. He loved them young, even though he was much older. He'd often invite them over for brunch and a swim. Um, is that what we call it nowadays? Just come over for brunch and swim. That was Netflix and chill back then. So he would invite them. He'd be like, come on, come over. It'll be fun. And they'd be like, okay, oops, I forgot my bikini. And he'd be like, that's okay. You can swim in the nude. I won't judge you. I'll just be, you know, staring at you from afar. But it was funny because even when he started having issues with his prostate, when he was in his later night, later 80s, his doctor was like, all right, homie, I think we're going to have to remove your prostate. And he was like, um, and how do you think that's going to affect my sex life? Thank you. Next. No way. No way, Jose. His biggest concern was how it would impact his sex life. And he was pushing 90. So that's that's the type of ladies man we're dealing with. His parents made a big impact on him. Uh, which I thought was kind of nice. His mother instilled very strong, like spiritual and religious values in him. So he was very, very religious. And then his father, Gus, instilled a strong work ethic and showed him how to master the art of a deal. So he made him very entrepreneurial. Gus was very entrepreneurial himself. So that's kind of where Connie got that. And this helped him later in his stint in politics, which he apparently hated. And it also helped him when he became an entrepreneur and hotel mogul himself. One of his most valued jobs was starting the first ever Hilton Hotel, which Connie wore many hats at. And I respect the hustle. Listen, he was day manager. He was night manager. He was room service. He was concierge. He did it all, which instilled that strong work ethic. Who are we talking about? I missed it. Hi, grandma swag mom. We are talking about the Hilton family. So right now we're currently talking about Conrad, a.k.a. Connie Hilton. Coffee Buzz on, on YouTube says, I met Jaja in an elevator in Hawaii when I was 10. I told her she had big watermelons. Wow, Coffee Buzz. I'm pretty sure she enjoyed that. 
Hi, Katie. Welcome on in, guys. Sasha. Yes, guys. We were talking about the Hilton family. So apparently the first hotel, it was very quaint. It was a very informal hotel, and it came more out of necessity rather than aspiration because, uh, you know, obviously we knew the Hilton brand grew into this big mega hotel, you know, in business. However, his father, Gus, was a big entrepreneur. He had other business ventures and they were now struggling at this time. So they really opened up this like small rinky dink that a property. They opened up a rinky dink little hotel, hotel, motel, so that they could make a little extra cash and it actually did fairly well. Then we move into chapter 17 and this is where the entrepreneur was really born. So Connie ended up moving to Cisco, Texas because that's where he's from, Texas moves to six, uh, Cisco, where he ends up landing. He ends up upon the Mobley Hotel. And this is where um, he considered it a flop house more than an actual hotel. But I guess he saw like potential in it. So nonetheless, he raised the money, ended up buying it for 50 grand. And it became his first real like property investment. He had a little bit of money and savings that he invested and then got other people to help invest in him as well. He instilled, he like really flipped it and turned it into like a profit generator. He remodeled it. He really kind of gave it a little extra sparkle. Is Connie's father, is Connie's father to Kathy, Kathy? Yes. Connie is Rick Hilton. Oh no, actually, I think it's Rick Hilton's grandfather. Actually, hold on. Let me let's clarify this real quickly, Sasha, because that's a question that I know a lot of people may have. Okay, so we have Conrad Hilton, who married Mary, and then Conrad had several children. Um, he had Nick Jr., Baron, and Eric, and then they had their children. Where does Rick come into it? Um, oof, oof. Okay, no, it looks like Rick was the was Conrad's grandson. So Rick's father was Baron. Baron. Okay, so this so we're talking about Rick's grandfather. Sorry, just to clarify. Oh my God, Hamilton! Look at you, Hamilton, dropping the first badge of the night. Hey, Zach Pack, wishing you all the best. Zach, love your shows. Thank you, Hamilton. I appreciate that. Dropping those super chats over on the YouTube. I love you too, Hamilton. That. I do. Okay, so back into it. So he flipped the property. He turned it into the first ever Hilton Hotel or like the his own Hilton Hotel, not with his father. But he ended up like really kind of building a solid business out of this. Oh my God, thank you, Harry, Harina, Lock H for the badges. Oh my God, you guys are so sweet tonight. Thank you. Are these birthday badges? Thanks. Love you. Um, so, but he really built like a solid, profitable business for himself. He instilled like a code of, of success and he had 10 rules to live by. He would be very hands-on with the staff. He taught them how to treat patrons. Like he was really a smart businessman and very hands-on. So he was successful there. Then he ended up getting his next hotel, which is the Melba out in Fort Worth. Then he ended up getting the Waldorf in Dallas, but this wasn't the ritzy Waldorf that, Waldorf that we know of now. This was like the OG Waldorf. Thank you, Reality T with Krista Marie for dropping a badge tonight, you guys. Yes, we love badges. Thank you, Krista. So this wasn't the Waldorf that we all know of. It wasn't the fancy, like, ritzy, glitzy Waldorf. It was, you know the up and coming starter Waldorf. Thank you, teeny genie. Appreciate you, teeny genie. Ooh, look at you. Fancy. We fancy like Applebee's. So eventually this led to him opening up the first actual, because these were hotels. They were technically Hilton hotels, but they weren't called the Hilton hotel. He ends up eventually opening up his first ever Hilton hotel. And that started the string of many that we now know. He was building very fast, buying a lot of properties and getting rich even quicker. And then he ends up falling in love. And his first, he found his first wife and his first wife, her name was Mary, which was named after his mother. Apparently he had some mommy issues. So he liked women that reminded him of his mother and that also happened to be named Mary. I think it's fucking weird. She was 19. He was in his late thirties, which is even fucking weirder. So he liked the young girls. And for whatever reason, he liked them named after his mama. So Mary became his first wife. 
will Zach end up in his birthday suit tonight? I mean, who knows? The night is young, Coffee Buzz. The night is young. Ooh, look at Allison coming on in. Allison says, happy birthday, Zach. Love the book club and all your shows. That's so sweet. Dropping that $20 super chat on the YouTube. Okay, Allison, make it rain, honey. Make it rain. Um, We shall see, Coffee Buzz. I don't have any plans to get in my birthday suit, but if somebody makes a proposition to me tonight and they're like, listen, I want some birthday cake, I'll be like, okay. You want some birthday cake? Okay. I can be convinced to get naked tonight. Um, anyway, he falls in love with Mary, um, and big age gap, nearly 20 years, but Mary didn't come from much. Okay. Mary, Mary did not have a little lamb. She didn't have anything to her name. I don't even, I don't even think Mary had running rot water in her house. So for her to land a man like Connie, it seemed like a real catch. They had two boys together. Um, but she describes, and as many people describe around her, or around him, Connie's real biggest love was his booming hotel business. His business was his priority more than his marriage and more than his kids. So hotels are popping up left and right. And things were, were great. We were living life. We were living high. And then all of a sudden, boom, the Great Depression hits. Then we get into chapter 18. Oh my gosh. Hamilton's like, I'm going to compete and Hamilton's like, I'm going to drop another ba- another super chat on the YouTube. You guys are so sweet. Happy birthday, Zach. I wish there were more people like you in the world. Here's to your best year yet. This is my last year of my 20s. Zach's acting like he needs an invite to get naked and birthday twerk for us. Oh, cr- Krista Marie knows what's up, honey. Um, thank you for the birthday wishes, you guys. It's early, though. It's Tuesday. My birthday is on Wednesday. So tomorrow, you just need to flood me with, like, sweet birthday messages. Listen, I talk about it on, on Wednesday's episode of the podcast. This year, I actually, like, really want to relish and celebrate my birthday, and I'm glad that I get to celebrate it with all of you. I mean, I feel like I've seen your white twerking ass a lot more than once a year. I know that's right. I love my white twerking ass, Krista Marie. Oh, cr- um, oh, Coffee Buzz says hi, Krista. Coffee Buzz on, on YouTube says hi to you. I love that you guys are just like shouting each other out. You're like, you know, fuck book club, fuck Zach's birthday. I'm going to shout each other out. I love you guys. I love that you guys are all friends too. Um, anyway, so then we get into chapter 18. And in this chapter, this is where we get into the demise of Connie's marriage to Mary. Okay. They ended up having a third child together, Eric, but their marriage was on the rocks. Connie was solely dedicated to his business and Mary began, you know, doing the Mary Magdalene thing and started having an affair. So from what it looks like to neither of them were really attentive parents to their three boys. Mary's mother ended up coming to like help take care of them and carry some, share some of those responsibilities. The young Eric ended up living with Mary and her new husband. And from what it sounds like Eric had the toughest of the three boys. Cause obviously once Mary left, um, Connie, she didn't have the Hilton money anymore. She was living life on her own. They were scrapping by, they were trying to make it happen. And, you know, she was a big drunk. Her new life just wasn't as glamorous as the Hilton life that she once knew her and her husband were terrible alcoholics. Uh, he later ended up passing away of a heart attack from heavy drinking things with Eric only continued to like get worse. And Connie was seemingly nowhere in sight or actually she was at the bar. That's where Connie was. Bonnie was at Connie was at the bar. Sorry, not Connie. Well, actually, yeah, Connie and Mary, they were both at the bar. They were at separate bars. Connie was at a nicer like Soho bar. And then Mary was at, you know, like the dive bar in, you know, in the middle of nowhere. But anyway, Eric had the, Eric ended up drawing the short end of the stick. Um, then we move into chapter 19. Here is where we enter Zsa, Zsa Gabor. So Connie was enamored with her, even though he was still like a serial bachelor. He didn't like to settle down. He didn't think he would get married again. But with, with Zsa, Zsa he was just like, oh, I like that. Give me some of that Zsa, Zsa Gabor. <laughs> give me, give me a, a chicken parm with the side of Zsa, Zsa Gabor. So First night he met her, she knew that she was going to marry him, and she told him such. She was like, I'm going to marry you, boo. And he was like, we'll see about that. And she's like, come see about me, honey. Her mother was very similar to Big Kathy's from what it looks like. She was very pushy. She was a stage mom. She was determined to make her kids stars and to marry wealthy men. 
And well, I mean, she did since Jaja, after four months, became the next Mrs. Conrad Hilton. Married life was tough. Connie was very strict and he tried to keep her on a budget. He tried to keep her restrained. He really just wanted a wife to come home to that would make him dinner. Um, She claims in her book, though, that he was something of a Nazi. She was like, he was literally like a Nazi. She wrote that white supremacy was his religion, claiming that he'd often use anti-Semitic slurs and was very derogatory towards people of different cultures or different religions. She was not a big fan of all of this, and this was all unbeknownst to her. She became very lonely, very isolated. She started to pop pills. She started to act out. Jaja was like, I can't do this life anymore. So Connie then decided, well, if she's going to act out and start to get a little crazy, we don't like when women get a little crazy, right? Well, Connie ended up having her committed to the psych ward, and she remained in a psychiatric hospital for nearly two months. None of what he never came to visit her. They would perform like insulin shock therapy. Like it was wild. I was like, OMG. He was like not very nice to her. Poor Jaja. But he never once came to visit her. So she desperately just craved attention. She says that she just wanted someone's arms wrapped around her. She was very lonely. She felt, you know, like her husband didn't love her. So what what do you do in a, in a case like that? You end up finding somebody new, right? You find a new love. Well, Jaja Gabor did just that. She found herself a new love in a hopeless place because her new love ended up being her stepson, Nick Hilton. She fell for her stepson and they began doing boom, boom in the bedroom. So Nick Jr., Conrad's son, had openly had a crush on his stepmother And I guess out of desperation, out of loneliness, out of horniness, I mean, maybe the vibrators weren't that good back then. She indulged and they started sleeping together. Um, I mean, to be fair, though, Conrad was much older. Connie was an older man. She was a little bit younger. The son, I guess, he wasn't like a child. He was, I'm assuming, of age when the affair started happening. So it sounded like Zsa and Nick were closer in age than Zsa and Connie. So, I mean, yes, that is crazy. Like, you're you're banging your stepson. It's weird. It's weird. It gives a whole new meaning to keeping it in the family, right? See, I told you guys, the chapters are crazier than last week's chat. I mean, are just as crazy, I would say. So, anyway, but Zsa Zsa makes it very clear that, you know, even though Nick was great and had a lot of stamina because he was younger, he wasn't nearly as dazzling as his father was in the bedroom. So she made sure to make that distinction for us in her book. But eventually, Zsa and Connie ended up separating. Zsa sued Connie, asking him for $10 million that she claimed she would donate to the Jewish refugees. She then He then sued her for cruelty, but like wasn't very specific about what that cruelty was. So this was basically the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial before anybody had ever heard of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. She got her divorce. And she got a very mediocre settlement. Unclear if she got her $10 million that she was asking for and unclear if she donated that to the Jewish refugees or if Amber, you know, she pulled an Amber Heard and just pocketed the money. Um, but yeah, she ended up finding herself a new husband and a string of many others. But her chapter with Connie had now come to an end. Um, naughty, naughty. Yes. So juicy, right, Allison? Then we get into chapter 20. Okay. And in chapter 20, now we get more into the kids and we're starting with Nick Jr. And Nick was originally dating Betsy von Furstenberg, who I guess was known as Madcap Betsy. That was her nickname. And apparently their relationship was volatile and they would get violent with each other and they were both big boozers. And the more that Nick drank, the more violent he became And so this became like a long struggle of sobriety with him. Just stop me by to say hello and to let you know you're looking super cute. Oh, thank you, Rosie. You guys are so sweet tonight between the super chats and the badges and the compliments and the birthday wishes. You guys are very sweet and I appreciate all of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, So him and Betsy just, you know, were, were volatile from the start. And apparently that's how all of Nick's relationships were. He ends up marrying Elizabeth Taylor with whom he was very fiercely passionate with. People don't, people describe their relationship as, as passionate, but not necessarily like an in love sort of relationship. 
but Liz and Nick were arranged by their parents. Their parents each had something to gain from their courtship and they seemingly were very troubled from the start. Conrad wanted in with MGM, who's the studio that Liz worked with. Liz's mother wanted her to marry into the Hilton money. So together it was this kind of arranged sort of marriage or relationship that neither of them were really like, listen, they were passionate about each other. The sex was there, but it wasn't like they were both like, you're going to be my forever person. It was more of a relationship out of convenience that was set up by each of their parents. Then we get into chapter 21 and in chapter 21, which is the last chapter we'll break down tonight we get more into the relationship between Liz and Nick. So Nick had a reputation for being violent, as we know, but it was especially strong when he got drunk and no one, not even his ladies, were immune to his, like, rage. Nick and Elizabeth officially got married in a ceremony that was staged by MGM, all in line with the release of her new film, Father of the Bride. And MGM was even getting ready to do a sequel to Father of the Bride that involved, I think it was, it was something, the, the premise was about the bride now having a baby and they were like, oh, well, this will be perfect because when Nick and Elizabeth decide to have a baby, we can work that into it because it was loosely based off of what was going on. Following their wedding, though, Nick ends up getting shit face drunk and spending the entire night without his wife at the bar, which is not how you want to start your wedding, right? That's not how you want to start the night of your honeymoon. But it wasn't all marital bliss as everything was staged. Everything was orchestrated for the press. As I said, the wedding was in conjunction with the release of Father of the Bride. So it was all set up by MGM, Conrad, and her mother. And it just, something about it just felt very, she seemed okay with it. But to Nick, something about it just felt like off. He wasn't able to really be himself. And I think that probably contributed to the more he actually drank. Hi, Carrie Hall. Carrie Hall dropped a super sticker. Thank you, Carrie. I appreciate you, my dear. So is Nick Conrad's brother? No, Nick is Conrad's son, Allison. So Nick is the son of Connie. Um, but like I said, it wasn't all marital bliss. He hated the fact that he was kind of becoming the eye candy and the arm candy of Elizabeth Taylor. He's like, I feel like I'm Mr. Taylor rather than she being Mrs. Hilton. She's supposed to be my wife. I'm not supposed to be being paraded around by her in all these press orchestrated events. Even their honeymoon was an orchestrated event. It was all about her. He hated it. So he began to drink even more. And then on their honeymoon, he started to beat her. The sex, however, made things exciting for them. And I guess was the reason they kind of kept it going because the sex was wild. And apparently the sex was great. Apparently Nick had one of the largest penises around. He and his brother and his father were all extremely well endowed. And apparently Elizabeth was hooked. He wasn't necessarily pussy whipped as much as she was dick whipped by his giant penis. One of his exes, I mean, I guess, you know, the massive dick makes it all worth it. One of his exes described it in the book as thicker than a can of beer and much, much longer. See, that to me looks terrifying. I believe one of the other exes also described it as like a horse dick, like banging a horse. Nothing about that sounds interesting or exciting. Like to me, that sounds terrifying. Like, could you imagine having to go down on a horse dick? Like imagine how much your jaw would like hurt from that. Apparently Elizabeth loved it though, because it kept her around for, you know, seven whole months. But when drinking, Nick was a monster. He was always getting into fights. He was apparently also similar to his father and similar to Paris Hilton, was dropping a lot of anti-Semitic slurs and racial slurs left and right. So, yeah, I am Mrs. Hilton's spiritual advisor for 20 years now. Hi, Dr. Evie. Welcome back. I remember you from the last live chat. Um, but yeah, Nick was Nick was a monster. And so even Zaza... Um, Nick's former stepmother, remember in the last chapter we talked about how Nick was having an affair with his stepmom, Zaza. She claims that they were still sleeping together while he was married to Elizabeth and all he did was complain about life with Elizabeth. He hated the fame. He hate, yeah, it's the Pete, it's the Pete Davidson energy. Now we know why Kim Kardashian is still a Pete Davidson, which she said on the Kardashians, what was it last week or the week before? She's like, I was, you know, I wanted that BD, I wanted to see what that BDE was all about. And basically I was just DTF. And that she was. Apparently, so was Elizabeth. But 
apparently Zaza loved it too. Could you imagine Zaza being like, I just have these two massive penises that I get to juggle. She Zaza apparently loved the big dick. Could you imagine leaving the Hilton family? Like, are you ever going to find dick that big again? I was going to say dick that good, but like I said, that's scary. Um, Right? Like you have dad and you have son and they both have these massive penises and they're just both banging you. And like, how does it get better than that? Like what? So weird. But anyway, Zaza's like, all he did, even when we were still banging afterwards, all he did was like talk about Elizabeth and how awful life was with her and blah, 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 blah. But apparently Connie was just like, listen, son, like this is what it's like. I was married to Zaza. Like you just got to put up with it because this is what it is. But eventually... Elizabeth and Nick, they separated. Elizabeth filed for divorce. And then she ended up telling her story in court of how cruel he was to her. She didn't really get into like specifics about the physical abuse, but she said that he was awful and he was, you know, not a great husband, not very present. You know, their marriage was a nightmare, but he promised to give up gambling and drinking, but he just, he never could. And he just didn't seem like the type of guy that was willing to settle down. Elizabeth Taylor is involved in all of this? Yes. Um, oh my God, I'm late, but I've been loving this book club. Listen, listen, it's juicy. Juicy, big dick energy, you know, managing those big egos. I mean, it's more than managing the big egos. It's managing the big dicks. That's a lot. It's too many, too many dicks, you guys. Why is Paris so thin? Not in a bad way. Just Kathy and Hilton seem healthy average. What is healthy average? There's no such thing as healthy average. I don't like when people talk about people's bodies. Muddy Grace. Yes, thank you. Well, and that's it. And that wraps chapter 21, guys. Next week will be our final week of book club. And we'll, we'll break down the final, I think it's five chapters, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26 maybe 27. I don't know. There are a few chapters left, but we'll be finishing the book in next week's book club, which will come back next Tuesday. Zach, I love the top with the fresh hair. Thank you, Storm Doris. Thank you, my love. I appreciate that. Um, But yeah, what did you guys think of these chapters? I mean, juicy, right? Like, what did you think of the Zsa Zsa Gabor of it all? What did you think of the Elizabeth Taylor? What do you think of the giant Hilton Dick? I mean, that means Rick must have some big dick, right? Kathy's like, lay that pipe. Thanks, Zach. Between big Kathy's craziness and all of this, it's a wild ride, right? I mean, I'm still like, I don't know if I'm happy for Zsa Zsa banging dad and stepson. I mean, to be fair, it's not like he was her son and it's not like, you know, Zsa Zsa and and Connie were married for that long. Oh, I do have photos of them, actually, if you guys want to see. I pulled a couple of photos from. So let's see. Let's start. So here's. Oh, no, that is not what I want. Oh. Whoopsie daisy. I don't think that's. Let's see if we can get this to work. So here's um, Connie in the middle and then on the to Connie's right. So on the screen left, we see Zsa Zsa and they seem like a cute little couple. I was like, ooh, Connie's kind of cute. I mean, the, the the 12 inch dick scares me a little bit, but like I might hit it. You know, he was a cutie patootie. I was kind of like feeling this vibe. They have like very old Hollywood glamour vibes to them. and I'm just like, yeah, kind of here for this. And then alternatively, we have Elizabeth Taylor and Big Dick Nick. What do you think? Who would you rather bang? Would you rather bang Daddy Conrad or would you rather bang Big Dick Rick? Sorry, Big Dick Nick. Because Zsa Zsa got to hit it on both ends. Well, actually, I don't know if they it, both ends necessarily, but she got to try them both on for size. She doesn't specify, though, in the book which one she likes better. But we have Conrad. And we have Big Dick Nick. So not sure which one you guys would prefer. Let's let, let's see the poll in the live chat. Do they have a family tree in the book? Yes, they do. Did Conrad figure out that Nick was sleeping with his wife? Did Eric become a drunk too? So we don't know much about Eric other than he had a really rough childhood. I'm assuming the next couple of chapters we'll get into Eric and the other brother. Yes, there is a... Um, 
a family tree, which I'll pull up momentarily. Photos of the horse dick. No, Char, we don't have any photos of the horse dick. Old Hollywood glam. Yes, Storm Doris. Conrad was definitely fine. Yes, he was, right, Angeline? I was like, okay, okay, that condong. <laughs> yes, the condong. Um, I'd be Zaza and try both. <laughs> Zaza loves it from both sides, from both ends. Um, Nick sounds like a nightmare. Yes, but he apparently was great in bed. He was very experienced from what the book details. Very experienced. Um, Conrad was much more handsome. So Conrad all the way. Okay. Okay, Utica Phoenix. Um. I don't see anything. Sorry, guys. The The photos were only on the YouTube live chat. Instagram doesn't give me the option to add these in. Gigi has tea, but it's DM for after party tea. Ooh, after party tea. Are we going to do after party tea? Juicy. Right? Older men seem to be more into pleasing. I'd go for Conrad. I don't, I mean... Aside from Conrad being well endowed, it doesn't really sound like Conrad's skills in bed were all that great. I mean, I don't know. They don't talk about that in the book. Um, but yes, there is a family tree. So it starts with Conrad Hilton and Mary Barron, who was his wife, his first wife. They, um, and then Mary ends up uh, marrying Max Saxon. So we talked about Mary in this chapter. Then after Mary, Conrad ends up marrying Zsa, Zsa Gabor and then later marries Mary Frances Kelly. Obviously, we know he loves women with the name, um, um, with the name Mary because of his mommy issues. But he only has three children and those three children were with the first Mary, his first wife. They were on, they were together for nine years. So they had their three kids, which was Conrad Jr., a.k.a. Nick. So it was Nick, Baron, and Eric. Those are the three. So Conrad, Nick Hilton Jr., and then William Baron Hilton, and then Eric Michael Hilton. So those are, were his three boys that he had with Mary. Nick went on to marry Elizabeth Taylor. And then he later marries a woman named Patricia, and they have two kids together. Baron ends up marrying Marilyn Holly. And with Marilyn, he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight children. And then Eric ends up getting married to a woman named Patricia and has one, two, three, four. So they only have four kids together. So, but between Baron and Marilyn, I mean, eight kids is a lot. They had William Barron Jr., Holly, Stephen, David, Sharon, Richard, who's Rick Hilton, Daniel, and then Ronald. And then Rick, we know, marries Kathy. Then together they have Paris, they have Nikki, they have Barron, and then they have Conrad. It's interesting that he names them all after. It's interesting that Rick names his two boys after Barron and Conrad. So it seems like he names them after, oh, I guess his father and his grandfather. So Baron and Conrad come from dad and, and grandpa. Interesting. I didn't know Nikki Hilton's name was Nikolai Nikki Olivia. Hmm. So they named her Nikolai Nikki. Interesting. Very interesting. So yeah, that's the Hilton family tree, yo. Follow Zach on YouTube. That's right, guys. YouTube.com slash Just Plain Zach. If you're watching this right now, smash that like button. Hit that bell notification button. That way you always get the notifications. You always get the T in your notifications. And hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. If you're not subscribed, you get subscribed. Oh, um, It should have been a dick-sized family tree. <laughs> That's funny. Um. Actually, they both sound like horrible husbands. Well, I'm not saying let's get what, let's marry them. We were just talking about banging them, you know? That's why naming is so confusing. It is so confusing. And the, the juniors and the double juniors, Rick was trying to win over his family by naming his kids after them, but they didn't get a, they didn't get him the bag. No, because he had seven other siblings. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mamma mia. Um, 
All right, guys. Any other closing thoughts, feelings, vibes before we wrap book club for the night? The Hiltons married teenagers. Yeah, they all they all married very young. They were much older. They married young women who were like 18, 19. Um, they liked them young. That's all I gotta say. All right. Anything else, guys, before we wrap? I know this was a bit of a shorter book club, but I mean, I just wanted to get straight to the tea and the scoop and the juiciness. And then we have the last few chapters next week. And we have to decide on what the next book for book club is going to be. Done a lot of books. Trump named his kids after Eric and Baron. Oh, that's right. That's interesting. Because Trump's not a Hilton. That's kind of weird to name your kids after somebody else's like dad and grandpa and uncle. Not a Trump fan, but cool info. Sure. They were best friends. Still kind of weird, though. Not going to lie. Um, you're the best, Zach. Thank you, guys. I guess we will do after party. Why not? We'll have a birthday countdown after party after this in a few minutes. Um, so if you want to join after party, go. It's uh, it's okay. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Zach. Thanks, Sasha. Sasha. Um, it's my birthday today. I'm 63. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Ann Brown. Everybody, happy birthday, Ann Brown. June 14th, a fellow Gemini. Happy birthday, Ann Brown. Snap, snap, pat the puss. All right, guys. Well, I will be here live on Thursday, as I usually am. On the podcast this Wednesday, I have Danny Pellegrino on, and we have a really fun episode planned for you guys. So you can expect Bravo Book Club next Tuesday. Danny Pellegrino this Wednesday. I have Chloe Veach from The Circle and Too Hot to Handle on next Wednesday. And then we have our regular Thursday Night Live this upcoming Thursday. We'll get into all the tea. We will be doing after parties. So if you want to join after party, I do those on my personal account, which is at Just Plain Zach on Instagram. Those don't get streamed anywhere. Those don't get, you know, rebroadcast anywhere. So what you get is what you get and you get it only there. So I'll be sure to pop on over. That way we can get that. And yeah. Thank you, guys. I was late, but we'll catch the replay crew. Have a great night, everyone. Happy birthday, Anne. Thank you, Amy. Appreciate you. All right, guys. I'm going to pop on over to my personal account, which is at Just Plain Zach on Instagram, and we'll do after party in just a few minutes. All right? Love you guys. Ciao for now. <laughs>